The last couple days we talked about predators using the online access to our children and grandchildren as a way to prey on them. But the predators aren't always natural. Sometimes they're supernatural. This is Skywatch TV, a special broadcast for Wednesday, May 18th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me in studio, a gentleman who will be a, featured on a couple of interviews coming up as part of our web-only series on Skywatch TV, the executive director of Luther Academy and the author of a couple of books that we highly recommend, I Am Not Afraid, Demon Possession and Spiritual Warfare, and Afraid, Demon Possession and Spiritual Warfare in America. We welcome Dr. Robert Bennett to the program. Uh, I'm wonderful to be here. Glad we caught you coming through town. Indeed. Um, the... Uh, the programs with, with Opal Singleton of MillionKids.org were, were eye-opening in the way she described the access predators have to our children through the Internet, uh, even through video games, which was really, um, you know, to me, you know, video game was like the old ColecoVision. You know, I, I, I know enough about my own personality. If I get into games, I, I get lost, so I, I don't I play. Well. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the online chat feature allows access from predators two predators to our children. Um, but in your book, Afraid, you deal with some of the aspects of uh, the internet and video games that Opal just touched on. As she mentioned, the occult themes that are present in many of the popular games today. Um, what are some of the dangers to our children and grandchildren through video games? Well, I, I think you mentioned that a little bit in your introduction, this understanding that, that we really um, start to dissociate ourselves uh, into this world of fantasy. And it seems safe because it's a world of fantasy. It's so not real. Nothing so. can happen to me there. It's not real. And, that's, and, the, and maybe that's true on a, on, a, on a naturalistic or a physical understanding. However, uh, you know, we've always been warned as Christians that we, we're not supposed to try to dissociate ourselves. We're not supposed to try to force ourselves into other states of, of of consciousness and, and so forth. Uh, and, and it's so very easy to do that. You talk about yourself getting lost in games. I used to play this game and, and I loved it. Uh, I think it was Age of Empires or something to that effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the whole idea of the game was is you set up your own civilizations, which is, you know, seems pretty easy to, to, to do and, and nothing too dangerous about that. And, and you war with the various civilizations, but once again, that's just recreating history and, and war. But the way to win the game is to create your own religion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to create your temples, you have to create your priests. Now your priests have the ability to, to uh, convert uh, others. Mm -hmm. And so really, as you start to think about it, you now become God. You're creating, you're directing the, the overall picture from outside. Uh, you're, you're the one who's, who's bringing faith to individuals and, and, and taking faith away. Uh, and so you, you start to fall into these pictures. We don't think of them that way. And I think that's the problem is we need to start recognizing that there's spiritual dangers. Now, I love the game and, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the game, but it's wrong now if you, if you start to fall into these type of, uh, of situations. And in my book, I write about a young man that mm -hmm. really took this uh, to a far, far extreme, a, a Christian young man um, who received a full scholarship to to university, a very good student, who um, you know finally outside of his parents' uh, realm, and uh, he put up this nice gaming system, and he was involved in this virtual reality game, and and he got so involved that he really began living his life in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he literally did not go to class. Uh, he didn't uh, leave that, that chair except for sometimes go to the bathroom, sometimes not. Um, and, hmm. and really just became a part of that, that false world. Uh, his parents came and you know, they, they found out somehow that he wasn't going to class and they found him there. And even when they were there, he was almost like he wasn't there. Uh, they were concerned that he might even be possessed or something mm -hmm, to this mm -hmm. effect. But he had got pulled into this so far. Now, of course, uh, eventually they got him some help. There's actually, um, uh, there's whole counseling and, and addiction programs out there for those who are addicted to video gaming and, and these types of things. And then the church got back involved with him and, and he's doing very well now. But, but now as he looks back mm -hmm. into uh, the things that he'd been, he understands now that there was actually a spiritual component there. 
that, um, that was drawing him in farther and farther to the point where he could no longer mm -hmm. get himself out of it. And, and we actually, we do see this sometimes in, in, in possession uh, type situations where people start toying with things and before they know it, it's, well, addictive behavior is the same uh, as well with almost any addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can maybe do a little bit of this thing or that thing and it's okay. And then you do a little bit more and a little bit more. And before you know it, it's got you and, and really you've lost, lost yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's interesting, most drug addicts or alcoholics would, would also say after they come out of it that there was a very strong spiritual component for them. Mm -hmm. So anything that, that is going to kind of take us out, dissociate ourselves from, from this real world in which we've been placed is, is, is something that we have, need to look to for danger. And we talk about this all the time, you're right. We have all this warning about the predators that are out there, the, the people are seeking to, to hurt our children, to take our money, all these things to the internet. Um, but once again, because we don't see it as, as a spiritual thing, uh, our, basically our, our guard is down, mm -hmm. we're, we're not being cautious, and, and we're, we're seeing this, this spiritual danger, the spiritual predator yeah. that is coming up out of these things as well. Well, and there are a couple of ways that this can affect people. You mentioned this was a Christian young man, and there are people who might say, well, this can't really be that harmful because if he's a Christian, then he's protected. He's got, you know, greater is he that's in him than he that is in the world. But it sounds like whatever spirit was drawing him into this game neutralized any good that he might have done in sharing the gospel, you know, making disciples of all nations. If it can draw you away from what we are supposed to be about, the Great Commission, then the enemy has at least neutralized you, if not taken you. Yeah, and, and that's uh, something I've been working on, on recently is the power of the lie. You see, if, if I can convince you of a lie, even though the lie is not true, it's nevertheless true for you. Uh, and and you know, in some of my writings, I use the example of if I came to your house and I, and I had Child Protective Services sign in my car and I knocked on your door and I said, here, I have this piece of paper to, to take your children and, and, and you don't want to cause a problem because you want your children back so you, you, it looks real and you let me do it. I drive away, you call Child Protective Services. They said, well, we never sent anybody out there. The whole thing was a lie. I had no power to do this. You had no reason to do this. But because I convinced you of this lie, nevertheless, it's true. Yeah. So we talk about Christians. Christians fall into these lies all the time in various ways. Whereas, sure, they're, Christ, they're, they're Christian. That Christ is with them. He that is in them is greater than that he is in the world. But yet, nevertheless, because of the lie... They're, they're brought into these other places um, where they really, they're going there mm -hmm. uh, because of that lie where they, there's no reason for them to be there and, and Christ is still with them. Mm -hmm. The theme, the occult themes that, that pop up in many games. Um, one of the games that I did play, and I played this with um, our daughter when she was young because she was too scared of the game. She, wa she wanted to play the game, but she was too scared of you know, the, the various monsters right. that you had to fight. Um, the, the game had a very Lovecraftian feel to it an old house in uh, uh, New England where there's a basement that led down to these various levels. And we played the game through once. And this was very early in my walk where I began to realize that, okay, you know, Jesus was real. He really did live. Died. It's okay. That everything he said was true. So I need to start taking this seriously. By the time we were into the game the second time, and I realized there was one level in this game where you were playing as a, a, a medieval priest but in order to defeat these spiritual enemies, uh, you had to cast spells. And at that point I said, you know what? What, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, and it, you know, me as a, as a mid thirties adult, didn't get it until I was halfway through the game a second time through. And I said, we need to stop playing this game because this is, this is not right. This is wrong. Um, but there are a lot of kids and teens, uh, people who don't have any kind of biblical background, uh, who are, playing these games and kind of absorbing these concepts and worldview um, where even the religious Christian characters are having to engage in magic and spell casting in order to advance in the game. Um, how might that affect them in how they view the rest of the real world once they're out of that game? I, I think it affects them to the point where they're sometimes not even able to function in that real world. That that virtual world is a safer world for them. It's a world that they understand. Um, but yet, uh, many times we'll find these folks who, are, who really don't spend much time communicating with real people 
or if they do, mm. it's through text or various social media types of forms. So people really lose the ability to, to function within community. And of course, that's one of, the, one of the things that we are called to do as Christians. We're to love and to care and protect our neighbor. Uh, but in this sense, we're of no good to our neighbor whatsoever. And so whatever the reason is that we're, we're finding a way outside of society, whether that's through uh, various other addictions or through uh, internet addictions or, or game addictions, we're still, um, we're still being neutralized in a sense, right. whether we're Christian or not, from that which God has, has given us to do. Uh, in Christianity, we talk about vocation in the sense that each of us have various vocations. I have the vocation of a father. I have the vocation of the executive director of Luther. I mean, on and on. And we all have these type of vocations, our work vocations, our home vocations. And, and behind all these vocations, uh, Christianity has always talked about that these are masks of God. God is serving us through the activity of our neighbor. And likewise, God is serving our, our neighbor through our activities. Mm -hmm. And so we can be neutralized and, and kind of put outside of the community uh, in which we're, we're, we're living and, 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 and acting. Uh, really, we've been neutralized from, from, God's act, from God's activity by the evil one who's led us astray by this lie. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, Sharon, who's um, far more intelligent than me, wrote, wrote a, a, an essay based on a presentation she gave at a conference uh, several years ago uh, about your brain on virtual sin. Uh, that was something Opal Singleton addressed in her talk. Uh, children, children, students who play the game Grand Theft Auto, which mm -hmm. involves some very um, R and X rated behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to advance past one level, you have to have sex with a prostitute and you have to pay actual money to the game in order to advance past that level. But then to get your money back, you have to kill the prostitute. Um, virtual sin. You know, Jesus told us that the standard of morality is this, that if I look at another woman with desire mm -hmm. other than my wife, I have committed adultery, not like adultery. It's not a metaphor for adultery. It's not analogous to a It is adultery. Okay. If you are playing a video game in which you are killing virtual characters, uh, committing virtual sin, you know, uh, to advance past another level, you got to back over the police officer and make sure he's dead. Um, th there may be some who see this as overreacting, you know, as a, as a, you know, fundamentalist Christian overreacting to something that's just a game. But given that Jesus set this standard, that is only what's in our heart that constitutes a sin. I mean, you know, I is there a danger here that we are actually training our children that, you know, these things really don't matter and that it's okay to do these things as a, in, in, a, in a virtual sense because it isn't real. Well, I mean, put this into a real, a real fantasy type of thing with, with individuals. If your, if your children was, were um, pretending to rape each other in the house when, when they were playing, I don't think you're going to say, well, that's fine. They're just it's not real. It's so, not real. Yeah. They're just playing, right? So these are obvious things that we would, uh, that we would not allow um, in our society, hmm. uh, especially as parents, that we now are, are allowing uh, in the video games. Although a lot of parents probably simply just don't know right, what's right. in there. Their, their child comes home and says, all my friends play this and I want to play this too. And well, I guess all the friends are playing it, so it must be okay. And I don't want my, my child to be kind of an outcast because he's not cool. Or, and besides, it keeps him quiet, so they're not bothering me. Quiet, well, I, so, yeah. I can, so I can go do my own sinful stuff. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, so I see this. I, I think you're right, though. I think we have to be careful. Um, you know, everything God made is good. And um, yet everything God made can also be used for evil. And so we always just have to be aware uh, sober-minded, as Peter would, would tell us, of that which is in the world, uh, and, and simply deal with each issue as they come forward. Hmm. Dr. Robert Bennett is the author of a couple of books we recommend. We'll tell you how you can get these. The book, Afraid, I Am Not Afraid, Demon Possession and Spiritual Warfare, and the follow-up book, which focuses on uh, the context here in the United States, Afraid, Demon Possession and Spiritual Warfare in America. Together, these normally sell for $30. We'll add to that the Chris Putnam book, the Supernatural Worldview, all three excellent reference materials documenting the reality of the spiritual war in which we find ourselves. Uh, normally $50 value, yours for $39.99 when you order through the Skywatch TV store, $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Call the number on your screen or 
Log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Bob, thanks again for your time today. Thanks. We sure appreciate it. Here. Um, he will be a guest on a couple of upcoming episodes of Skywatch TV and our online content. You'll find it on the YouTube channel and also the Skywatch TV channel on Roku, along with other exclusive web-only content like Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck, Sci Friday with myself and my best friend, our science editor, Sharon K. Gilbert, and uh, again, other interviews that you won't find on the network television schedule for Skywatch TV. You'll find more information online at skywatchtv.com. This week on Skywatch TV, Chris Putnam joins Tom Horn. They're talking about their new book. It's The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist, and The Vatican's Last Crusade. That'll be broadcast this afternoon on the Cornerstone Network, coast to coast, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. And again, Saturday, the Victory Television Network around uh, Memphis and down in Arkansas, and on the Christian Television Network, coast to coast. Uh, for a complete listing of dates, times, and stations, and networks, log on to skywatchtv.com and look for the link in the top menu bar that says Channel Listing. Speaking of video coming direct to your home, the Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference is sold out, but you can see the live stream of 32 presentations, 25 speakers, 32 presentations over two days, and those will be archived for six weeks after the conference, so you can go back and watch them again, invite friends over, have a big prophecy conference watching party for information, and to register, log on to prophecywatchers.com. We depend on your support to keep this going. During the month of May for Mother's Day, uh, a couple of gifts for mom. The book's favorite family meals and Unthinkable, a guide to women's self-protection, a personal journal and a beautiful mug. All that we will send to you as our thank you for your donation of $20 or more. Just log on to skywatchtv.com slash donate. If you have comments, questions or suggestions for me, please send those to dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert and this is Skywatch TV. Coming exclusively from Skywatch TV for a very limited time starting May 31st, 2016. When you purchase the new book and final report from Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist, and The Vatican's Last Crusade, you will receive the largest giveaway of 2016, an unprecedented value of over $200 in free books, DVDs, audio files, and a data DVD library with tens of thousands of pages of ancient literature no longer available, as well as movies, WikiLeaks files the government does not want you to see, and more for your library or to give away as gifts. Included in this biggest giveaway of 2016 are Chris Putnam's full-length DVD presentation, Astrobiology and the Vatican ET Connection, the new five-part Skywatch TV special investigative report on the book, The Final Roman Emperor, plus two mystery books with a $40 value, and a data DVD library with thousands of pages of ancient literature, movies, and audio series for your library or to give away as gifts. And for the first several thousand customers, while supplies last, you'll also receive Satan's Dirty Little Secret, the two demon spirits that all demons get their strength from. Satan, You Can't Have My Promises, the spiritual warfare guide to reclaim what's yours. What Happens When I Die, true stories of the afterlife and what they tell us about eternity. Becoming a Prayer Warrior, a guide to effective and powerful prayer. An unprecedented value of over $200 in never before offered free products. And the biggest giveaway of 2016, yours absolutely free when you purchase The Final Roman Emperor from SkywatchTV.com for only $19.95 plus shipping, beginning May 31st. But be advised, this astonishing promotion is limited to first come, first serve while supplies last. So it's urgent, beginning May 31st, 2016, you place your order for the final book and biggest prediction yet in this four-year investigation by internationally acclaimed best-selling authors Tom Horn and Chris Putnam. The final Roman Emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, and the Vatican's Last Crusade for only $19.95 plus shipping. This offer is on a limited time basis and will end without notification. So be sure to visit skywatchtv.com to follow the updates in the countdown to the biggest giveaway of 2016. Order the new book by Tom Horn and Chris Putnam on May 31st to receive the unprecedented value of over $200 while supplies last. Free products limited to quantity on hand and may be replaced by products of equal value.